High fantasy, but with bugs. It's finally time for Hollow Knight. Released on February 24th, 2017, Hollow Knight quickly became one of the best-selling Metroidvania games of all time, and it quickly fostered a cult-like following due to its challenging combat, hand-drawn art style, and satisfying lore. With a sequel that has a release date of never, it's time to venture into the world of Hollow Nest to see why this game is considered to be the best in the genre. This is a series called Beloved or Busted, where I 100% video games that people either loved or hated to see if they really earned their reputation. Since I'll be playing the Voidheart edition of Hollow Knight, I'll have access to the four DLC content packs that release during the game's lifespan. This means I'll have to earn all 63 achievements to really know if this game is as good as people say it is. To fully complete this game, I'll have to find all the different collectibles which come in the form of grubs, charms, upgrades, and codex entries. I'll also have to earn all the achievements that come from defeating the various bosses. These two categories will build up to the completion achievements, which require doing all 112% of the game's content. I'll also have to beat the game under specific conditions. This includes the three speedrun related achievements, as well as one of the hardest achievements in the game, Steel Heart, which is a permadeath with 100% completion. The last achievement this game has is also its hardest, and that's Embrace the Void, which requires me to beat every boss in the game back to back without dying. This is the hardest achievement I have ever done, and it's not even close. This project took me about 200 hours to complete, so if you enjoy achievement hunting content like this, I'd appreciate it if you could pop an achievement by liking and subscribing, it really helps me out. Now let's journey into the Hollow Nest and see what this great kingdom has to offer. No! F dude! One hit and I'm done! My journey truly begins as I wander into the mysterious town of Dirtmouth and learn about the Great Kingdom below. This area acts as the hub world for the game and it's where I'll find a save point, vendors, and a fast travel station. This is important to note because dying will send you back to the nearest save point and sometimes the nearest save point is nowhere near you. Shortly after beginning this adventure, I actually got my first charm, which also gives me my first achievement. I need to know where I am on the map though because that is just scuffed. Oh, we got our first achievement. Charmed. Acquire your first charm. Okay, that's the start. Now we're locked in. Now there's 40 collectible charms, so I'll be getting these as I explore. But with my first charm acquired, I can now see where I am on the map, and I can find my way to the first boss, the False Knight. There's a few things about combat I should bring up now that we're fighting a boss. These masks up here represent our health, and almost every attack will deal one mask of damage. Then we can use our soul to regen health. I'm a big fan of this system because it rewards being aggressive by building up the soul through combat. Now that I've explained that, I'm about to spend the next 60 hours not doing it. But if I had, the game would have been significantly easier. When I was done clowning around, I managed to kill the false knight and earn my achievement. Hollow Knight does something really cool with its open world. As you explore, you'll notice not everything is accessible right away. And since this game isn't linear, as I explored, I would pick up new abilities that opened up paths in previous areas. This means I'm going to spend a lot of time being lost, followed by stumbling into a boss fight. And considering I was told that Hollow Knight is basically 2D Dark Souls, I'm not disappointed by this at all. Still trying to get my bearings, I ran into Waifu Bug, aka Hornet. Hornet is one of the most important characters in the game, and it's not because she's our half-sibling. This is the first fight where you actually have to manage your movement and not just jump around randomly. The bosses in this game are going to get very hard, and this fight acts as a litmus test for how bad you are. And honestly, I don't want to talk about it. When I eventually first tried Hornet, I got an achievement. Oh, destroyed. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, achievement unlocked. Test of resolve. Defeat Hornet in green paths. And I got the Mothwing Cloak, which gives me a new movement ability, dash. More importantly, I was finally given a quest. The main goal of this game is I need to find and awaken the three dreamers. So at this point, I finally knew there was something I was supposed to be doing. But considering I can't even use a basic dash ability properly, it'll be a long time before I get there. As I played this game more, I realized a lot of the magic comes from the little moments in the open world. And while I was looking for my conquests, I made new friends, found more fast travel stations, and even watched the bugs version of the notebook. All of this pales in comparison to my interactions with Zote. This guy sucks. This guy's just a hater. Zote the hater. This guy is just like a YouTube comment section. What the hell, man? 
<laughs> Bro, you still do your job after you're dead? What an idiot. <laughs> we'll be seeing more of him later, but just know that I had the choice to let him die and I kept him alive. There will be consequences for this. No way I dashed into it and died. But more on that later. In the time that I've played, my ability to platform hasn't gotten any better. So I took some time to upgrade my health by finding four mask shards. This also gave me an achievement. With my newly upgraded health and my yet to be shaken confidence, I made my way to the Soul Master, who is located in the Soul Sanctum. Who would have guessed? This boss is a perfect early game example for why Hollow Knight is addicting. The Soul Master has a bunch of unique attacks, and during every attempt, I would learn how to avoid or counterattack one of his moves. I felt like I was constantly getting better after every death, and that feeling is like a drug. Once I overcame the Soul Master, I earned an achievement and a new ability. Oh, absolutely zooted, bud. Yeah, fart all over the place. It's not gonna help you. There are upgraded versions of these abilities that I need for the 112% achievement, so I'll talk about these later as we need to. Even though I was experiencing major highs by overcoming bosses, I was also getting the dangerous lows that comes with being bad at platforming. Hollow Knight's beautiful world design can come at the cost of your sanity. There's a very good chance I died more to platforming around flying enemies than I did to bosses in my initial run. This leads to moments such as these. Oh shit! Ah, I don't know what to do! Oh my fucking god. There's nothing I can do when he's just shooting me in the air. B Bro, why are these enemies in the game? I already hate this fucking game. And I just... Bro. Bro. Okay, can I fucking... Man. Bro, I'm actually losing my fucking tree here. I probably have 12 hours of footage like this, and one of the things that makes Hollow Knight such a difficult game, and the main thing that made me rage, was the distance between benches. You can die and have to do a 5 minute platforming mission just to get back to where you were. It slows the game down a ton, and it can take away from the magic of exploring the world. That being said, even with all the deaths, I managed to earn an achievement for getting my very first vessel upgrade. Like I mentioned earlier, I need to awaken the three dreamers. Doing this will unlock the black egg and pave my way to the battle with the Hollow Knight. To start this process, I went to visit Monomon the teacher, but standing in my way was Umu. Umu? Yumu you? Who cares? But this fight is unique because you can't actually hurt the boss until our friend from earlier, Quarrel, shows up to burst Umu's bubble. After taking a few hits myself, I was able to crush this jellyfish and make my way to the dreamer. Oh my god, okay, I actually just dominated that guy. One of the easier fights in the game for sure. Oh, his hat's gone. Whoa. With Quarrel's self-sacrifice, I was able to awaken Monomon, destroy the first seal on the black egg, and earn an achievement. With my first seal unlocked, I started exploring some of the areas I had missed up until this point. This is when I got achievements for some of the collectibles. I stopped by the Big Lipped Salubra and bought my 20th charm, which meant I had exactly half of them at this point. Next, I went back to the Crystal Hell that you saw earlier and found my 23rd grub, which marks off the achievement for rescuing half the grubs in the game. While getting both of these, I purchased the final map from the cartographer legend Cornifer and rested at a bench to uncover the entire kingdom of Hollow Nest. The world was finally starting to feel open, and when I went to fast travel with the last egg, I got news that sounded exciting, but honestly, it left me a little bit broken. Ding, 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 ding. Let me hear what you gotta say about this place, brother. I found it, the stag nest. Oh, bro, let's go. Go to the stag nest. Take me to your home. This is actually kind of dope. This is, this is some lore. Oh, wow. Discovered all of the stag nests. Bro, they're all dead. Yo, I feel so bad. Take the achievement, though, for finding all of the nests. With a tear clinging to my cheek, I didn't anticipate any more moments like this in the game. But as I explored the blue lake, I got to spend a final moment with an old friend. As Quarrel passes into the next world, I'll remember him with an achievement and a screenshot of this last moment together. Of course the calm didn't last. As I traveled to the edge of the world, I came face to face with Hornet again, except now she's absolutely insane. This is an example of how the difficulty gets amped up with upgraded bosses. They get new moves, they're faster, and they force you to get good in order to beat them. It took some time, 
but with some persistence, I was able to eventually take down Hornet Sentinel. Proof of resolve. Is it hashtag beat that ass? Yep. Before moving on to my next dreamer, I took a detour into the Colosseum of Fools, because I'm, well, a fool. The Colosseum of Fools has three challenges in it, and each of those challenges has an achievement for beating it, but they get exponentially more difficult. Each of these trials acts as a horde mode, where you have to defeat waves of increasing difficulty and then beat a boss. In the first challenge, the Trial of the Warrior, I had no issue making it through the waves and dodging the spiky floor. And as a reward, I got to beat up the smuggest bug alive, Zote the Dusty. Oh my god. Zote the Hater, absolutely executed here in the arena. Rival a rivalry is exactly what I'd call it, too. Oh, another achievement, Warrior. Complete the trial of the warrior. Can I just keep hitting him? See you, bud. The second challenge is the Trial of the Conqueror. This trial has way more enemies, but there was nothing that stood out compared to the first one. I was able to first try it and earn the next achievement. Moving on to the third trial, I was expecting it to be easy, but that could not have been further from the truth. It is so much more difficult than the last two that it feels like there were six levels of difficulty between them. This trial made me lose my mind. I'm dead again. I just, I can't do it. I don't have the patience. I just don't have the fucking patience. Every attempt is about 10 minutes long, so the fatigue can build quickly if you keep failing. The two main reasons this trial sucks is you have to spend time fighting flying enemies while only being able to hold onto the wall, and you have to fight the most annoying enemy ever created, the primal ass, Pid. These bugs were designed with the only goal being to cause blind rage in players. Those enemies are so annoying. Like there, there's nothing fun about those enemies. Even with the anger mounting, I kept trying until I reached the God Tamer boss fight. And when I got here, it was the one and only time I needed to do this fight. You know, I gotta kill this guy? Oh! Wait, I got him with the thing! With the thorns! Is that it? Bro, please- Oh, let's fucking go, dude! The Colosseum of- has been defeated! With the Colosseum of Fools wrapped up, I thought it was time to awaken the last two dreamers and unlock the Black Egg. I first ascended the Watcher Spire to destroy Lurian the Watcher. Woo! All right, baby. Two Watchers down, or two Dreamers down. And next, I ventured into the depths of Deep Nest to awaken the final Dreamer, Hera the Beast. This unlocks the fabled Black Egg. But more importantly, it allows me to see my completion percentage so I can get an idea for how much I'm still missing. And with 90% completed, there was only 22% left to finish, so I got to work. I started by getting the rest of the collectibles. This included freeing the last of the grubs, finding the last vessel fragment, getting a big ol' smooch from Salubra after finding the last charm. Ooh. Oh, we're getting smooches! Achievement unlocked. Bless. You know, after that kiss, I am feeling blessed. Acquire all the charms, and, the charms and receive the blessing. And fully farming the kills required for the Hunter's Journal. This left only one upgrade to finish, which is the Mask Shards. In order to get the last Mask Fragment, I'll have to complete the achievement Solace. And in order to do this, I need to get a delicate flower from the Grey Mourner and bring it all the way to a grave located in the Queen's Gardens without taking any damage. Since I'm as clumsy as they come, I thought it would make sense to run all the way there while killing all the enemies I can, then run back to get the flower. This means I only have to worry about my subpar platforming skills when trying to deliver this to the grave. Unfortunately, some enemies respawn regardless. Bro, are you serious? I died of the little jellyfish? I was swinging down and my... Oh my god. Well... All right, do it again. Now, if you get hit, you have to return to the mourner and explain what happened. I'll take one delicate flower, please. I'm sorry, okay? You can talk to me in Simish all you want. It's not gonna change the fact that I need a new flower. All right, I promise. Morgan's Basement Delivery Service, MBS. But I think MBS is the name of the Saudi government. Never mind. And after another accidental package failure, I did deliver the flower to the grave and made it all the way back for my reward. Lamar? Che? Lamar Che? Oh. Oh, achievement unlocked. Solace. 
bring peace to the gray mourner and we get a mask shard for that and it's our last mask shard i actually didn't even realize we were at 15. should we get an achievement let's go masked with all of the collectibles done i was closing in on the end of my first playthrough but there was still some branching achievements to tie up the first was to build the pure nail and spare the nail smith so he can uh have fun with the nail master i'm not judging the second branching achievement is for ending the rivalry with Zote. Even though I defeated Zote as we know him, we still have to defeat Zote as he sees himself. This is the most random fight in the entire game, and it took so many attempts to do this. But we'll be seeing this fight a little bit later on in the Pantheons, so I'll wait to talk about the specifics until then. But for now, this is what I thought about it. God, thank Jesus, man. <sighs> Dark Romance. I really didn't like that boss. That was that felt so dumb. I'm glad I'm glad it's over for now anyway, because that was just felt ridiculous. The last achievement I needed to set up before moving into the end game is called Passing of the Age. And in order to get this, I needed to sniff out this large nosed mushroom man in a few locations around Hollow Nest. This doesn't count towards the 112%, but doing this will get an extra achievement at the end of the game. It's finally time to start the DLC content. The first thing I wanted to tackle was the Grim Troop content. This DLC has a lengthy quest line and it branches into two achievements. And on this playthrough, I'm gonna be defeating Nightmare King Grimm. This is one of the most well-designed boss fights I've ever seen in a video game. And it's damn hard. Fucked you. All right, guy's a little bit faster than I thought he would be. Everything from the music to the environment is stunning. And even though the boss is lightning fast, the attacks are predictable and recognizable. This fight is the definition of getting good, since every attack does two masks of damage. Ugh. I'm literally gonna go stand in a fucking cold shower as punishment for being this goddamn bad. And even though this fight took me over an hour to beat, I felt like I deserved the win. Doing here. Fine, hit him twice. That's fine. We oh. Run into the spike, of course. Got to. Wouldn't be a fucking Morgan's Basement run if I wasn't fucking killing myself against the part of the map that doesn't move. Walk, 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 get hit, fuck. Jump, bounce, jump, bounce, jump, jump around, jump up, up, and get, oh, and get down. Doable. I don't know how many times I have to hit him here, but I think this is the end. Oh, well. There's no shot he fucking hits me with that twice. Oh, thank the Lord, dude. Oh my god, easily the hardest fucking boss in the game so far. Achievement unlocked. Ritual. I'm surprised 2% of players could even get that, to be honest with you. But whatever, I got a little bat, and this tent is gone. Okay, well, the fucking farty worm is still here, though. The last achievement for the Grim Troop DLC comes from completing a separate questline where you banish the Grim Troop, and I was able to do this on a separate playthrough. The next thing to do was beat the Godmaster DLC and obtain the remaining 5% needed for the pure completion achievement. Godmaster contains five Pantheon challenges and the first four are required in the 112%. Each of the four Pantheons gets progressively more difficult than the last and each of them contains 10 bosses that you have to kill without dying. Most of the fights are gonna be from the main game, but each of the Pantheons has a brand new boss fight that's never been seen before. The first step was to beat the first three Pantheons since the fourth is locked behind them. I didn't have much trouble with the first three, and I was able to earn the achievements with only one death. But the fourth Pantheon was very difficult for me, and it's because of the final boss, Pure Vessel. This boss is very well designed, just like Nightmare King Grimm, but the main problem was me. I had trained myself to use the once every three seconds invincibility dash to avoid every boss's attacks up until this point, but with Pure Vessel, that just won't work. So I had to train out my bad habits and learn to jump Pogo over his attacks. Wrath of the Gods! Oh my God, he just did so much damage to me. Suck my dick, bitch. I'm gonna, fr Radiant, no damage. <clears throat> Never mind. <laughs> but in the meantime, I decided to finish my first playthrough since I was getting fed up with Pure Vessel. For the first of the three endings, I have to enter the Black Egg and battle the Hollow Knight to the death. This is the weaker version of Pure Vessel, and after all the practice I'd been doing on him, I put an ass whooping down on the Hollow Knight on my first try. This gives me my first ending, and it shows our character becoming the new Hollow Knight. Achievement unlocked. The Hollow Knight. 
defeat the Hollow Knight and become the vessel. I like that as a final boss. I think that's really cool. I've done it. I've beaten the game. Press any button to continue. Achievement unlocked. Passing of the age. So this is for our mushroom friend. All right, I don't, uh, I don't know if I fully understand that one, but 111%, 50 gamer score. Beat the game with 100%. So we still have 1% left to get, which will happen when we beat the fourth Pantheon. And we've unlocked the permadeath run. With a game completion under my belt, I finally felt confident to go into the fourth Pantheon and claim my final completion percentage. With around five hours of practice at this point, I was finally able to defeat Pure Vessel and reach that 112% completion. Oh my god. I cleaned house, baby! I practiced that fight a lot, and I have never really successfully dodged the finger move. What is this? I don't think we have to fight Radiance, right? He's not in until the fifth one? There we go. Soul and Shade complete the pantheon of the night. With two endings left, I was finally ready to clean up the campaign and get to the difficult part. But first, I had one more thing to do. There's a hidden area at the bottom of the abyss known as the birthplace, and upon entering it and confronting a memory of the Hollow Knight, our character finally realizes that he may not be able to fulfill his purpose, and this unlocks an achievement and it opens up the final two endings. For the second ending, I have to continue attacking the Hollow Knight after Hornet subdues him. This way, we'll continue the cycle and become the next Hollow Knight. I'll also finally get the 112% completion since I finished Pantheon 4. Achievement unlocked, sealed siblings. Okay, Hornet and I, the goddamn team. 112% completion. For this last ending, instead of fighting to become the next Hollow Knight, we enter a dream and find the true final boss, the Radiance. I won't spend any time talking about this fight for now, because there's an even harder version of this boss that took me well over 20 hours to beat. So with this final ending, the Radiance is destroyed, the Knight is able to return to the Abyss, and the corruption is cleansed from the land. Thus, all endings have been achieved, and it's time to move on to the next step in this completion. Before we move on, I just want to say that I am really enjoying this game at this point. This is the first time in a long time that I felt the magic of discovery and the excitement of learning in a video game. The last time I felt this was when I played Dark Souls 1 in 2011, and it's clear to me why a community has been born around Hollow Knight. This game is truly something special and if my time with the game ended here i would say it's a 10 out of 10 but as you know things don't end here on to steel soul mode so here's the deal i need to beat the entire game with 100 completion and i can't die once or the whole save gets deleted considering my first playthrough took 70 hours i've got a ton of experience with the game now but honestly I don't remember where everything is, so full transparency, I followed someone else's route to do this. Now I feel confident in being able to beat this game without dying if I know where everything is. On top of this, I wanted to try to beat the game in under 5 hours to get all of the speedrun related achievements in one go. Everything I had seen online made it sound like it was a cakewalk to do the speedruns and steal heart at the same time. But I can tell you right now, that is so not true if the guide you're using does speedrun skips and you are not a speedrunner. For this run, I knew I was going to be doing a few things. The first thing I did was leave Zote to die because fuck him. Also, I wanted the achievement that comes with not saving him. The second thing I was going to do was get access to the Shaman Stone for that 50% spell damage and a spell twister, which decreases the cost to use spells. Spells are super strong in this run, and since I'll have to kill all seven of the Dream Warrior bosses, their HP heavily scales with nail upgrades. So my plan is to mainly focus on spells and not upgrade my nail until they're all dead. And honestly, that plan was working really well for me. I was cleaning up every boss I came across, from the first Hornet all the way to the Dung Defender. Nothing gave me trouble. That's when things took a turn for the worse. The guide I was following did a skip that had me absolutely baffled. This doesn't even skip much, but without the compass charm, I didn't know how to get back on track. This left me with one choice. I had to practice the skip on my other save file. I was hours in at this point, and spending time learning the skip doesn't bother me at all. Let's see if the, uh, the practice worked. Okay. Fuck me, dude. Oh, we did it. Woo! 
Woo! Okay, the skip practice worked. Now, the other two skips are way too hard, so I'm just going to play through the level from here. Now's the time to talk about what I'm going to skip of the 112%. Since I only need to get the 100%, I decided I wouldn't be touching the 5% from God Home because I'm not a lunatic, the 2% for fighting Nightmare King Grim and regular Grim, 1% for the Trial of the Fool, 1% for a full Mask Shard, 2% for the Awoken Dream Nail and Seer Ascension, and the 1% for the Void Heart Charm. These are easily some of the longest parts of the game, so it's an easy choice if you ask me. I did make sure to put the Nailsmith out of his misery this time around though. I wanna say, Nailsmith, thank you for your time and your effort. You were a sick homie, but I gotta put you down. There it is, purity. 10 gamer score, slay the Nailsmith with the pure nail. It was honestly worth it. And his little house, the fire's gone out. With the Nailsmith slain, the three dreamers awoken, and all the grubs rescued, I was sitting at a crisp 99% completion. So that puts us at 99%. I gotta think about what I wanna do for that last 1%. I thought about banishing the Grim Troop, but honestly, I'm scared now that I'm at 99%. Earlier in the run, I ignored the part of the route that went to the Traitor Lord. This boss deals two masks of damage, and with only six masks at the time, there was no way I was chancing it. But now that my option is between the Grim Troop or fight the Traitor Lord, the decision seems like an easy one. I made my way to the Queen's Garden and did the battle for my final 1%. With Traitor Lord defeated, 100%. All that stands between us and the achievement is the Hollow Knight. To the egg! With 100% achieved, all that stood between me and the Steel Heart was the Hollow Knight. And if you remember all that practice I did on the Pure Vessel, this fight was gonna be cake. Good, I forgot about that attack. Oof. Okay. Keep smacking, keep smacking! Boom! Bomb on him. Shriek. Oh my god, this guy's got infinity health. Beat his ass. Oh my fucking god. Dude, and that... Wait, do I gotta absorb his soul? I don't remember. What do I gotta do? Oh, hold B to focus. Give me that achievement. That steel soul 100% achievement. Give me. That's the end. Of the credits. Where is my completion? Game completion? 100% in 10 hours and 46 minutes. Oh, is this it? The Steel Heart. Holy shit. Probably the most stressful achievement I have ever gotten. To think that we wanted to do that in five hours and it took more than double. But I'll tell you what, we got it done. Honestly, I'm as surprised as you are. But with a fantastic guide, I managed to beat Steel Soul on my first try. I fully expected this to be the hardest and most anxiety inducing part of the game, but considering I've only reached half of my total playtime, that isn't even close to true. Permadeath modes are normally peak difficulty in a video game, and the only thing that can top that is this permadeath boss rush mode, Pantheon 5. But before I tackle that, I had to do one final playthrough of the game to get the 5 hour speedrun achievement, since I was nowhere close on Steel Soul. At this point, I have 60 out of 63 of the achievements, and two of the missing ones are Speedrun 1 for beating the game in under 10 hours, and Speedrun 2 for doing it in under 5. With two full runs done at this point, I made it to the final boss with two hours to spare, and I thought it would be free. Here's the problem. I have the bare bones abilities because of how fast I got here, so I don't have my invincibility dash. This means I had to relearn the fight by jumping over every attack and then using Descending Dark as my main way to deal damage. A quick note on this ability, and I'm going to be calling it D-Dark from here on out, when you use this attack, you actually get a few frames of invincibility. This will be really important later on, but for now, I had to kill the Hollow Knight using it as my primary ability. And let's just say it wasn't going well. It took me over 45 minutes to kill this guy, and there were times when I thought I wasn't even going to make the 5 hour mark. Bro, come on! Really? When I- I'm fucking in the move and I clip his ear? Ah! 
This is gonna stop me from getting the speed run, bro. But in the end, there was only one acceptable outcome. Oh, let's fucking go. Oh my God, dude. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. That shit took me like 30 minutes to kill this guy. <laughs> there we go, baby. Speed run two. Complete the game in under five hours. And then we should also get one for completing it in under 10 hours. Let's fucking go. It took three and a half hours to do it. With the 112% achieved, Steel Heart completed, and now the five hour speed run is finished, it's finally time for Pantheon 5. This is the hardest challenge I've ever done in a video game. And with everything else completed, this is the last thing I have to do in Hollow Knight before I've experienced everything the game has to offer. The Pantheon of Hollow Nest is a grueling challenge and to beat it, I have to defeat 42 bosses in a row without dying. I didn't mention it much before, but there's an area in Godhome that contains all bosses on multiple difficulties. And you can practice any fight down there, assuming you fought the boss in the Pantheon. I will be spending many hours down here. But for now, it's time to begin the battle. Now, since the bosses in Pantheon 5 have been battled in previous Pantheons, some things get added to increase the difficulty. For example, the first boss has two vengeful flies instead of one. And the second boss, the Gru's Mother, is in a small room with spikes between the platforms. When I did my first few attempts, I hadn't played the game in weeks, and I decided to stream these. I had lost all my previous skills, and things were not going well. Oh my god, dude, we're gonna die. Okay, if we die to this... Okay, the game lagged here. Let's pretend like that didn't just happen. We didn't just die to the fucking... The goddamn bot boss right at the start. Um, we're just gonna pretend like that didn't even happen. Just to put things into perspective, a full run of P5 can take about an hour. So getting to the end and dying is a complete nightmare. There were a ton of attempts that ended early on because I was just bad and out of practice. And this first day was a rude awakening. Eventually, I was able to get to the first Pantheon 5 exclusive fight, the Sisters of Battle. The original Mantis Lord fight consists of fighting two of the lords at once, but this time around, you have to fight all three. I was still shaking off the rust and my fingers weren't working properly. I had put on Steady Body, which makes it so your attacks don't push you back, but I was so used to moving forward after an attack that I literally just walked myself to death. I wasn't at the point where I thought I needed to practice any of the late game bosses because of how bad my performance was, but after mastering the Sisters of Battle, I somehow fluked my way to a really far PB. I managed to first try bosses that I hadn't fought in a long time. I made it through the God Tamer, Regular Grim, the Watcher Knight, and even Umu, which is one of the most frustrating fights in the game when you're out of practice. Since Quarrel isn't in the fight this time around, you have to hit these little jellyfish that spawn randomly at Umu, all while dodging electricity that spawns on your location. The key to this fight is just having really good movement, and my lack of platforming experience made it tough, and I was coping in any way I could. It feels like RNG and it makes me mad. I did manage to squeak out a win this time around, and then I got to face the next Pantheon 5 exclusive boss, Winged Nosk. This fight is similar to the Vengeful Fly fight since Nosk will just nosedive and you can jump pogo him when he does. But any form of panic dodging will have you take damage from the summons and the orange goo. I lost composure this time around, but I did reach a new PB at boss 28. This is, that is such an ass place to die, dude. Cause I'm just dashing into the globs. Clearly that's not how you're supposed to do it, but that is just so frustrating to die there. Honestly, we made it pretty far though, so I guess that's fine, but still fucking mad. I wish I could show all the fails, but that's just not possible. I died so many times between my PBs, and I spent even more time practicing. This Pantheon's difficulty spikes hard when you reach bosses 36 to 40, and I think it's safe to say that the Pantheon doesn't even really start until this point. The first boss in this segment is Soul Tyrant. This boss is a faster, more aggressive version of the Soul Master, who we saw earlier. This is an endurance fight since almost all of the openings only let you get in one attack, and even though the attacks are telegraphed, this boss is fast. Thankfully, this is the easiest boss in this leg of the Pantheons, and the only thing you have to worry about is leaving with as close to full health and soul as possible. And if you're wondering why, it's because of this. Nice. All right, who's next? Oh fuck, okay, this is the guy I've literally never beat. Okay, I don't think he does double damage though. I've only practiced him with double damage. Markoth is the bane of my existence in Pantheon 5, 
and I spent hours doing this fight. Markov does a few things that make him tricky. First off, he has a shield that floats around him that can block attacks and deal damage. Secondly, he spawns heat-seeking swords randomly around the map, so the window to land attacks is only really available when he does this shield spin attack. Now, something that changes with this fight, and the reason it's so goddamn hard, is there's no floor. So not only is this boss hard to hit, you have to do platforming the whole time. If you thought it couldn't get harder, then you're wrong, because the second phase of Markov has an additional shield, and the heat-seeking swords are twice as fast. It's safe to say, this was not the run, but it was a new PB. Wow, I'm real good at fucking dodging when I've got no health. And I'm shit. Fuck! Oh, I hate that guy so much. In my practice, I learned that Markov only takes 11 hits to reach the second phase. So if I can get 10 hits in, then I can nuke Markov with magic before he has a chance to whittle me down. The longer this fight goes on, the closer you are to death. It's just science. So with the Shaman Stone equipped, I have enough power to beat him down quick, knowing the exact amount of time it takes to transition to phase two was the key. It's just unfortunate that I had to die to Markov in the Pantheons three more times to figure it out. Oh, I jumped into it like a meathead and I just died. Oh, that is so fucking ass, dude. Yeah, whatever. I just give out, I'm dying. I don't care anymore. I'm fucking done, I'm fucking done. Yeah. That's so dumb, dude. I don't understand. So this is exciting. Leave me alone, please. Bruh. I'm gonna heal once. Might be a mistake. Oh my fucking god, I did it. Okay. When you can practice and not take double damage. Now we gotta fight this guy. Oh, fuck. If only things got easier after this fight. Do you remember when I saved Zote at the start of this video? Well, this is that save file, and since Zote is alive, I now have to fight him immediately after Markov. He wouldn't even be in the Pantheons if I had left him to die, but I was far too stubborn to start a new game at this point, so I had to live in a Zoteful world. My first time fighting Zote didn't go as planned, but I had to practice him a ton. The thing is, Zote is one of the most random bosses in the game. His movement is sporadic, he summons enemies of random types, and his moves look really similar, so it's really hard to tell what he's going to do. This adds up to a really frustrating time. All you can really do is react fast and hope he doesn't decide to just walk into you. I ended up settling on a hyper-aggressive strategy against Zote. If you're careful, you can get tons of hits in as Zote is walking around or summoning spiders. And with all the nail hits, you can generate enough soul to use the invincibility from D-Dark when he falls from the sky. I was finally using all the tools at my disposal, and I was getting closer to becoming the true Hollow Knight. No! Wait, get him. Nice. Okay, new PB. We've never been this far. Thankfully, the next boss is basically a rest spot. He does double damage, so you need to be careful, but once you stagger him, you can earn infinite soul and just juggle the staggers before finally killing him. This puts the new PB at 39. We've already killed Grim this stream. Let's just fucking do it again. Thoughts? The only boss that stands between me and the final section of Pantheon 5 is Nightmare King Grim. This fight is the exact same one that I did earlier, but that was over a month ago at this point. So I'm super rusty. Even though this fight is very predictable, the boss is super dangerous and my lack of practice really started to show. Not only did I choke once on this boss, but I choked twice back to back. No! I stutter stepped into it. I was safe. Uh, that's so tragic, dude. I just choked so hard. That's crazy. I've literally never died to that attack in my life. After dying to that fight, I spent a few hours beating not only Nightmare King Grim, but also Pure Vessel because he comes next. When I re-entered the Pantheon of Hollow Nest, I wanted it to be the time that I reached the final boss. Without much trouble this time around, I made it to the final leg of the journey, and I had a really close call on the boss that I called Easy. Good RNG, yes. Okay, 
but all it did was get me amped up for my rematch with Grimm. With all this practice under my belt, I managed to finesse my way through the fight this time, and with a stellar finish, I had reached a new PB. Let's fucking go! Okay. One more to go, baby. Until we unlock Radiance. Holy fuck, dude. I had high confidence in being able to beat Pure Vessel. And since the goal was just to get two Radiance, I dropped Shaman Stone for Unbreakable Heart, which gives me two more masks. I also put on Grub Song so I could generate soul when getting hit. This defensive build should make this fight easy, since I was able to beat this boss consistently with only nine masks. All my practice learning the jump pogo attacks paid off, and I was finally able to beat this guy on command and unlock the privilege of practicing Absolute Radiance. I thought he was dead. He's fucking dead. Holy shit, I knew I could kill that guy. I don't know if, hopefully I, hopefully it gives me health, bro. Like this, huh? I remember this. Jump attack, jump attack, huh? You want some of this? I'm ready for you, brother. Or I'm, I'm just happy to be here, bro. I'm like the guy who's invited, who's not normally invited. I'm just happy to be here. Oh shit, sheesh. Oh. Ah. Oh fuck. <laughs> Dude, who cares? We made it. Doable. Oh my God, bro. I can't even describe how fucking excited I am to finally be here at the final boss. And uh, the hardest enemy is still left to fight. I I'm not going back in there until I can kill him reliably time after time after time after time again. There's no way I'm fighting through everything again just to get there and get destroyed. Woo, let's go. Having successfully made it to the end of Pantheon 5, I now have access to the practice fight with Absolute Radiance, and it isn't an exaggeration to say I spent close to 15 hours fighting this boss. This is the most complex fight in the game, and in order to kill this boss successfully, you need mastery over the game's mechanics. This fight has a few distinct phases. In the first phase, you have to dodge swords that come from the top or the side of the screen, walls of light that move from side to side, heat-seeking light orbs that spawn randomly, and even beams of light shot directly from the radiance. There is so much going on here that you can feel overwhelmed fast, but as I practiced, I learned tricks such as the light beams never shoot the same place twice. So if the first one misses, then dodging the rest are pretty easy. This first phase requires building up muscle memory for all the attacks, but the next phase is where things actually get hairy. The second phase has all the same attacks as the first phase, except the floor is gone, so now you have to platform the entire fight. I struggled a lot with understanding how the flow of this phase works. The key is to not chase the boss around and just wait for it to teleport to the bottom few platforms. With some good timing, you can D-Dark through all the close range attacks and then get a ton of damage in. The hardest part of this phase is the patience to not chase the boss, and being comfortable dodging all the attacks for a long period of time. Now the third phase was my least favorite, and it's called the climb. You have to jump up these platforms while Absolute Radiance shoots lasers at you. The higher you get, the more accurate they become. The hardest part is getting the timing down for the invincibility dash. If you can bait the lasers out far and then dash back in, you can control the tempo while you climb. But honestly, I never felt fully confident with this part of the fight. The final phase is a 1v1 at the peak of Hollow Nest. The boss will teleport from left to right while spawning homing light orbs to attack you. But if they ever go off screen, they despawn completely. So by pogoing on the boss, you can force them out of bounds and fight the boss at the same time. Holy shit, I actually killed it. Oh my god, fucking progress. Oh my god, bro, like fucking three to five hours of death. And I have beaten the boss one time in practice. Let's fucking go, baby! Run it again! With one win under my belt, I felt a flood of confidence. I continued brushing up my abilities in the practice fight, and after getting multiple kills in a row, I was finally ready to take the fight to Pantheon 5. Everything had been building up to this. All the failures, the moments of triumph, the emotion, it built up to this. And after killing Pure Vessel for what I hoped was the last time, I began the final battle.
Okay. Phase one down. Only got hit twice. That means we're still gonna have soul for the next stage. Okay. Get some RNG here. Good RNG, good RNG. Okay, never mind. I didn't want it anyway. Come on right here, baby. Let's go. Ooh, that was fucking close. It beat his ass! What am I doing? What the hell was that? I didn't even jump. Oh my god, I did it again! Okay. Surely it can't get worse than this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, okay, he's gone. Heal. Don't snipe me, don't snipe me, don't snipe me. Ooh, okay. Oh. Oof. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, it's fine. Come on, come on. Let's go! Oh my god, dude. We fucking did it okay i don't know if you can lose this part what do i do attack yo beat that ass oh my god go 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 oh my god dude oh my god oh my god i played this game for so long. It's been two goddamn months, man. Two months. Oh my God, I am so excited right now. I've got goosebumps. Oh my God. I can't believe I did it. All that practice, all that practice pays off. Oh my God, dude. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, the game was free. If you're looking for an easy achievement game, if you're looking for an easy completion? Man, Hollow Knight is easy as they come. Like, look at that. Achievement unlocked. Embrace the void. Ascend the pantheon of Hollow Nest and take your place at its top. <sighs> oh my God. Oh my God. It amazes me that I let Hollow Knight go under my radar for this long. This game offers a once in a decade adventure, and even though I spent half my playtime dying in practice arenas, I won't let that stop me from saying Hollow Knight is a beloved masterpiece. Thank you for watching this adventure, and I hope to see you in the next one.